Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the March 10th regular Port Clinton City Council meeting. If you'll please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, the Lord's Prayer, a moment of silence for our men and women serving overseas, and our first responders serving their neighbors. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. As you can tell, we have uh, at least one substitute this evening right here. And uh, Miss Leah is not able to make it, so I'd like to take a motion to have Miss Sardi be the clerk for this evening. I'll make that motion. And I will second. Thank you, Mr. Trolley. Thank you, Miss Phillips, for making that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Congratulations. <laughs> well, then, when you're ready, would you please call the roll? Present. Thank you. Council, in front of you, you have the minutes from the February 10th and February 26th meeting. Um, Unless there's any corrections, I'd like to give a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Thank you, Mr. Trolley. Do I have a second? Thank you, Mrs. DeFreitas. All in favor of accepting the minutes as presented, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The minutes have been accepted. Uh, the chair notes that certification has been received regarding the rules of compliance for this meeting. We do have a guest presentation this evening. I believe there are some folks that uh, organized the the Burning Snowman event. They spoke at the Planning and Development Committee last week, and we've asked them to come and, and talk to us this evening. Folks, the floor is yours. Thank you, Councilman Snyder. Thank you very much, uh, Port Clinton City Council, for having us here. And also, thank you very much for uh, community, uh, Port Clinton community, for having us here. I uh, want to introduce ourselves uh, to you. Uh, I'm Nick James. I'm a volunteer committee me member of the Burning Snowman Fest. And also in attendance, we have Steve Hall, also a volunteer uh, committee member, and also Lynn James, um, also a, a volunteer committee member. Just to give you a little history on who we are and how we began, back in November, a group of us uh, gathered together and started reflecting on last year on how, you know, with uh, while Davis Bessie was having their, uh, their, their uh, refueling, their outage, there was a nice influx of the people that were in our community helping to stay in our hotels, uh, you know, go to our restaurants and whatnot. And we kind of got together and go, hmm, is there something that we can do to attract people to our area this year? And we kind of had this very interesting idea of what if we burned a snowman? And uh, initially, we, we was like, okay, we, we, we developed this as kind of our own little event. And, uh, and since we, since we uh, pretty much assembled back in November, and the event happened at the end of February, we knew that this wasn't really enough time to be able to introduce this to the, the city of Port Clinton and say, hey, can we burn a snowman in three months? And so what we did is we kind of established a location uh, in Bay Township at Lagoon Saloon. But our main priority was to make this a Port Clinton event. And that's how we went forth. And uh, later on, we did partner on with the United Way of Ottawa County. And then the balls, snowball really started rolling in where we started getting a lot of interest from sponsors that have supported the United Way of Ottawa County for other events, including the uh, uh, Gem Beach Rocks, which is an event that they're not going to be having this year. And when we approached them with this idea, uh, Chris Galvin of the 
United Way was very, very excited because she saw this as an opportunity to help fill the void of the Gem Beach Rocks. Now, when we did this event, when we planned this event, we didn't know what to expect. This is the inaugural year of this particular event. We, did not, we didn't know if we were going to get 200 people, 500 people, or whatever. Well, the, the event took place on February 28th, the last day of February. The weather was ideal, it was beautiful, and 200 people didn't come, 500 people did not come. Right now, the estimates is we had about 2,000 to 2,500 people attend <coughs> this event, which is amazing. And needless to say, we literally outgrew our venue within the inaugural year. And then that's when we realized, holy cow, what did we just create? Last week, as Councilman Snyder mentioned, that we did meet with the planning committee last year, or no, excuse me, last, last week. And our hopes is, in working with Port Clinton, is what can we do to bring this event to, a, to downtown, to make it a Port Clinton event? When we made this event, when we created the event, it was always a Port Clinton event. While you know we had sponsors from all the way, all, all through downtown, we had shuttle service to, to transport people from the Goon Saloon to downtown, and also from downtown to the Burning Snowman event, where after sunset, we burned a 20-foot tall snowman. So needless to say, it, it, it went well. We got a lot of great positive press out of it for Port Clinton. And we all know that Port Clinton is, a, is currently a seasonal, seasonal <coughs> economic area. And we're hoping that by introducing this event to downtown Port Clinton, this will help bridge Port Clinton to not only become a, to take it, to transition it from a seasonal economic area to hopefully a year-round economic area. So, thank you. Any questions for Mr. James? I have a question. Mr. James, what do you do uh, for a living? What do I do? I have my yeah, own. I forgot to ask you last week at the meeting. So. <laughs> I have my own video production company, Nick James Productions. Uh, here locally, we have worked with the uh, Main Street, uh, uh, historic Main Street, where we produced a, uh, a promotional video for Port Clinton here a couple years ago. Um, and we've also worked with uh, a lot of other uh, entities here locally as well. Okay, were you, were you able to get this burning snowman on television? We, we did not get it on That's television, but we do, have, we do have video documentation of it, so that way we can use it to help promote it in the future. And the, the whole event was primarily social media driven, where we actually made video productions to kind of hype it up, and once we saw how much the videos that we were producing were being shared and passed on, we realized that we were on to something. It was kind of like the scene in Jaws where they see Jaws for the first time and he goes, Brody goes, I think we're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> That's kind of what we felt when we saw how well everything was being shared uh, for this particular event. Cool. Now Steve Hall, he was, he was very integral and uh, in setting up and, and composing our press releases. Uh, Lynn James, who's also my wife, uh, she was very integral in uh, getting sponsorships for the event and also the program that we had as well. Cool. Good luck in the future, man. Thank you. Thank you. And some of the things and fellows that were at the meeting uh, jump in. Some of the things we talked about were obviously the location of burning a 20 foot snowman. Um, they had Hundreds of people show up by motorcycle or uh, snowmobiles, um, and even a plane, how that would work within the city limits, wouldn't. Um, snow, ice, all the other logistical things that we talked about. So thank you very much for, for coming this evening. <coughs> Moving on to public comment. Rick Noter, 608 East Perry Street. <coughs> thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, your last um, town hall meeting, um, you indicated that you really don't have any numbers or much from Nick Rose about the, the 
development at Waterworks Park. Do I have that right, or is that incorrect? We have uh, we have conceptual drawings, and we have the numbers that everyone has heard. But as far as estimated costs of different things, no, we don't have any of this stuff. Okay. Did he has he told you, given you an idea, what time frame he is going to get those to the city? He truly has not. You know, those are things that I request uh, to get that information uh, before we can talk about any potential of uh, what the tapping fees or tips or any of those components. We need to have those numbers. And I have not received them as of yet. Okay. You kind of indicated that you've asked him for them, all right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, also at the meeting, we talked briefly about a, a property in Worcester, Liberty Street Commons, which um, was developed by Mr. Rose and uh, which um, was sold at uh, auction um, after Mr. Rose defaulted on the $3.1 million loan that was 80% guaranteed by us citizens and caused us to, as citizens, to pay out um, $2.39 million to the bank, banks um, to make good on the loan. And um, there was some question as to whether it was actually still owned by Mr. Rose or not between, between us. And I sent you an email. Did you get that email? I did get that email. Okay. And I'm still taking a look at that. Uh, you sent me a lot of different things, and I definitely want to dive into that. So okay. Well, Good. As long as you got it. Thank so you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and looking at the ordinances um, quickly, this uh, the one that um, with the uh, enter into an agreement with Pogemeyer Design Group. Um, section 3 in there is just, to me, mind-boggling. Uh, the mayor, the auditor, the treasurer, the clerk of council, the director of safety and service, the director of law, and other city officials, as appropriate, are each authorized and directed to take any and all such actions, including execution and delivery of any agreements or instruments as are necessary, appropriate, or required to consummate the transactions contemplated by this ordinance, including the creation of any special accounts necessary for the funding received to construct this project. Jeez, that's a, that's a broad brush. That's an awful broad brush to be having council turn over all that to certain individuals without having to say so after this ordinance um, is approved, if it, if it is approved that way. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Moving on to the manager report. All right, Mr. Pro Temp, uh, first I want to inform council, uh, as you're well aware of, we've been working uh, diligently with the Fort Clinton Rice House Conservancy Group. Um, and we're still in, in the process of, of, of having those discussions and trying to finalize the license agreement. Uh, but we're happy to say we are prepared to uh, have a review of the smooth land lease. We are prepared to go ahead and move that very well. Uh, by no means does that mean that we finalize the license agreement. So we're still trying to clarify some details on that and have further discussions with that. Um, also, you know, uh, Councilman, I, I, I know a lot of uh, Councilman. I also have some administration, uh, Main Street Board, a lot of people that I work with continuously every day. Uh, to participate in an evaluation of myself. You know, too often we're right here, we don't see and, and understand. Are we really doing the job to our best abilities? Where are our weaknesses to try and do better? Uh, so for me, I, I just want to say thank you to everyone who participated in that uh, evaluation, your feedback. You know, obviously I reached out to you because I, I really have value in what you provide to me. And I definitely want to continue on your growth and be better and better serve our community. So I want to thank you your participation in that. Um, let's see. Uh, recently, uh, we put together a, a panel made up of Walter Weehinkel, uh, Cole Hadfield, Tracy Colson, myself, and we did interview, went through the interviewing process for construction management. Uh, we had a couple different uh, uh, firms that had applied. Uh, we, we not only reviewed contracts individually and have a grading schedule, but we also do personal interviews with each one of these groups. Uh, and continue to compile numbers and we have a grading system. Um, we have finalized that. Um, you know, we are <coughs> in the process of selecting the group just to let you know to do the construction manager. That would be of the road construction itself. I think as council is aware, uh, we have asked uh, uh, Eric Peterson, which we have, I fully have all the trust in the world and he has the skills necessary to do the construction <coughs> management on the water and sewer lines. 
Well, I have to say that we will not have tried to ask some, a little bit of guidance from our engineering our companies to, to maybe just help him. As this is the first project he will be experiencing, we want to make sure that he has uh, all the, uh, uh, everything in his hands if he need be to help him along that process. Um, I also would like to commend, uh, you know, as last year we had some pretty rough winters this year, and, and I had the as I looked at our service department and all our different uh, service organizations, they work extremely hard to safeguard the community to the best of their abilities with the equipment we're providing. Obviously, we are running on, uh, with a very uh, low amount of, of employees when it comes to snow removal. Uh, and those guys have, have you know, at any time they don't have to accept all the overtime, uh, but they do not hesitate in trying to do their best and chip in to help the community uh, get, keep us moving and making sure those emergency routes were all good. So I, I really want to commend uh, the, 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 the um, people in our service department for their efforts, uh, along with people that take care deal with this stuff on a daily basis, whether we're in bed or not, by the fire department and the police department as well. Um, really appreciate that. So thank everyone. Also, uh, just to inform council, uh, as you know, we go through a bidding process for the construction of Second Street. Uh, those uh, bids have been uh, in, and they are currently being reviewed by the engineering firms uh, that are in charge of that to give us a recommendation as to uh, which one is the, the best, the cheapest, and best company to proceed for We can't hear you. And that's all I have tonight. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I forget to pull that mic closer. Yeah, pull it closer. <laughs> Put it in your pocket. Put it in my pocket. That's all. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Mayor. Auditor's report. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just want to announce that I sent out the month-end reports for February 2015 last week. If you did not get a copy of those, please let me know. I'll make sure you get a copy. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Hanson, Treasurer's Report. Mr. President, for Tim, my report was passed out tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wilbur. Nothing further. Mr. Coley. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Welcome back from sunny Florida. Thanks for bringing the warm weather back. Yeah, it's really hard. Since the last time we spoke, and I want to reiterate what the mayor said, that the guys did a great job with all the stuff going on out in the field. Um, since we last, I last spoke at these meetings, um, we had five water breaks during that time frame. We had 10 to 12 freeze-ups. The guys actually made a contraption that could go into the line, put hot water in it, and it would bore through. They were frozen solid. And so those guys have been out down digging in the holes and putting it in the line to clean out these water lines. It's been very difficult on those guys, you know. When I was gone, I guess we had sub-zero temperatures and they were out doing that and trying to unfreeze stuff. So um, I really commend those guys for doing what they're doing. Along with that, we had snow plowing to do during that time frame also. So those guys were very worn out, so this weather is a nice fresh air. Now, obviously, we're getting all the phone calls. The potholes are a major problem. I will say it's no different in other cities. I've been around. I drove up routes I-75. It was awful. It was awful. Um, cars had actually blew tires by hitting potholes on 75. So it's not new to anybody. We live in Northwest Ohio. Um, we've already started that process. We're milling and filling a couple spots that we have. We've gotten cold patch. We've used recycled asphalt. So we're doing the best we can. If there's one that you guys see, don't hesitate to call City Hall. I have no problem with that. We know they're there. And we're trying to work through those and get them taken care of. So. I got you doing the best they can. I know Scott told me today they got six more ton of asphalt today to go out and start patching holes. So that's where we're at with that. Also wanted to change cemetery cleanup. We're going to push that back to the 30th. Cemetery cleanup will be March 30th. Have everything off by then. That way for the week with Easter coming up, you'll be able to put it back on. So we're going to try to do that. It's a mess out there right now, obviously. So bear with us. We have some uh, dumpsters coming in to clean all that stuff up. I have been in contact with the Reese Across America guys, and they're gonna come in and take a lot of their stuff off to help us out with that particular stuff. So that's in the works. The other thing I gave you is this activity guide. There is some extras if anybody wants them. Um, they're at here, they're at the city schools, um, Gruder Hospital and the chamber. We all pitch in to put this together. I think it's a great idea. Puts everybody's contact information there, whether it be swimming or whatever, they know who to call to get that done. Then you have some of your events here. 
So people look at this next year if you have an event put it on. I mean, I look in here, they've got the senior picnic. We've got Beach Perch Poker in there. The Halloween Spectacular. The bus trips of the Reader Hospital does. Great book to have for any event you're looking for. So they are really available at those places. And I want to thank uh, Jay Gluth did most of the work on this. I can't take credit for that. Um, she did a great job, had to work around to find it, and we got somebody to print them for us. So that's all I have tonight there. Thank you, sir. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Thank you. Just, question. Uh, just curious, do you have any idea when the dumpsters may be coming? No. Is that normal? Yeah, what, I, what I've been debating, to be totally honest, is a great question, is um, putting that along with the beach cleanup. So probably April, maybe the week after Easter <coughs> type area. I haven't finalized that, but I, I think I want to do them both the same day. To get my volunteers to help with the cleanup and then send the kids up to the uh, high ground to unload yeah. the trucks. So that's what I'm working on. So in that range, the 11th range was a thought. Okay. Oh, so, <laughs> so now I gotta come to so your house. <laughs> I swear this is <laughs> 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 Thank you. Uh, moving on, Police Chief. Nothing tonight, Mr. President. Fire Chief, Chief Hickman. Fire Chief Johnson. Air. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, pro Tem, uh, let you know that everything's fine. She did exactly what I thought she would do, was refuse. Of course. Uh, <laughs> she is uh, embarrassed, and I won't tell you the story, but it's pretty funny, and she tells it a lot better than I do. <laughs> so that's all I've got tonight. Thank you, sir. Under correspondence, we will leave all the correspondence to when uh, President Hartlaub returns in two weeks. So we will move on to ordinances and resolutions. We have no third ordinances and resolutions. We have no second ordinances and resolutions. There are two ordinances and resolutions on the agenda right now, 5-15 and 6-15. The administration has presented us with two additional ordinances that they have requested to add to this evening's agenda and conferring with the clerk uh, she has signed the WSOS uh, Ordinance 715 and the Pogemeyer Ordinance 8-15. So at this point, I would entertain a, a motion to add 7 and 8-15 respectively to the agenda. Thank you, so Mr. Miller. Thank you. Do I have a second? Thank you, Ms. Phillips. Call the roll. Yeah. At your convenience, would you please call the roll to add the two ordinances? Thank you. Those two ordinances have been added to this evening's agenda. Ma'am, when you're when you're ready, would you please read by title and summary or only ordinance 15-5 or 5-15. An ordinance authorizing the chief of police to enter into an agreement with the state of Ohio Department of Natural Resources for financial assistance for the operation of the Port Clinton Park Patrol and appropriating funds. Does council wish to take any action on ordinance 5-15 this evening? Seeing none, that will be moved to the March 24th meeting for its second reading. Manager readiness, would you please read by title and summary only ordinance 6-15. An ordinance amending and restating chapter 1313 of the codified ordinance of the city of Port Clinton entitled flood damage prevention. Thank you. Would the council like to take any action on this ordinance this evening? Seeing none, that too will be moved to the March 24th meeting. I would imagine President Hartlaub will be assigning that to a committee. When you're ready, would you please by, read by title and summary or only Ordinance 7 15. Ordinance authorizing and directing the mayor to enter into a contract for professional services with WSOS Community Action Commission Inc. Incorporated and declaring an emergency. Thank you. Would council like to take any action on this ordinance this evening? Seeing none, again, that will be moved to the 24th for its second reading. That would be assigned to the committee. And finally, would you please be, read by title and summary only Ordinance 8 15. An ordinance also authorizing and directing the Director of Safety and Service to enter into an agreement with Kogemeyer Design Group 
for engineering services for the Madison Street reconstruction project and declaring an emergency. Thank you. Does council wish to take any action on ordinance 815 this evening? Seeing none, we'll move that to the March 24th meeting. Having no additional ordinances and resolutions, we will now move to comments from the floor. Mr. Bilo. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, last week at the Planning and Development Committee meeting, just like Nick James said, we uh, discussed the Burning Snowman Festival. I think the general consensus was that it makes perfect sense to fill a hole for uh, winters in Fort Clinton. So for the purposes of the committee, it um, furthers economic development, at least in a small part, for hopefully a weekend. February next year. So we took no official action, but I think the next steps were to work through the safety service director's office to secure a site and come up with a uh, proposed plan and pursue it as normal. But I think everybody on the committee and everyone that was in attendance seemed uh, fairly supportive. So I think it's great. And that's all. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Mrs. Sarney. <laughs> Just because you have to take the minutes. <laughs> Thank you. This is different. I echo what Gabe said. I wasn't at the planning committee, but I did attend the Burning Snowman and talked to several businesses downtown and people that attended you know, 18, 12, or 8 dinner there and were just surprised by all the people in town because of it that were shuttled back. It ended at dusk and the town was packed. Um, and I want to congratulate Port Clinton's Touch of Class. They're ranked 12th or 10th in the nation. I'm not sure the number, but they're going to participate. April 17th in New York City. It's a great accomplishment for them for Port Clinton. That's all I have. Thank Can you. I come up with more for this? Mr. Trolley. Yeah, just uh, emergency services <coughs> meeting is 5.30 next Tuesday the 17th, and we will be meeting at the PC Fire Department. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mrs. DeFrancis. I have nothing to say. Ms. Phillips. Uh, laws, rules, and ordinances will meet two weeks from today in the event that you have something you'd like us to look at. And I have a few things this evening. I'll make up for everyone. Uh, the, the finance committee meeting will take place at 6.30, and uh, we too will relocate that to the fire station. We'll find a, a cubby hole somewhere at 6.30 next Tuesday. Park on the, on the west side of the station. We'll have a, a door propped open so that everyone can get in. Uh, the Easter egg hunt is going to take place on Saturday, April 4th uh, at the county, county courthouse at 11 a.m. Uh, quite often the, the city asks for donations of, of candy or cash to purchase candy. Uh, if you could have those to Jen Porter here at City Hall by the 25th of March. If you would like to assist the Easter Bunny in stuffing thousands of pieces of candy into hundreds of uh, plastic eggs, uh, let Ms. Porter know, and she will be happy to assign uh, assign you bunny duty. <coughs> the Ohio State Alumni Club here in Ottawa County is going to be having their annual scholarship auction on the 20th, which happens to be the first day of spring, 20th of March. We'll be at the Elks Lodge. If anyone's interested, we've got the OSU Pet Band coming along with uh, 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 Big Night. You've probably seen Big Night on television quite a bit. Uh, would like to congratulate the Portland School District and the, the Fullbackers Club for their uh, their work. I know you're heavily involved in that, in, in renovating part of our, our West End and the, the Trulay Stadium. There's a lot of fond memories for myself at that field. Uh, I look forward to seeing it brought up to the, the 21st century. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, to help fund that, there's a wild game feed at uh, Zinc Calls on the 21st of March, and I believe you have some tickets. You can also contact Zinc Calls to, to get those tickets. And uh, personally, I would like to thank uh, my former math teacher from high school, Bob Hartung. He invited me to speak at the Agua County Shrine Club last Thursday, and I filled him in on, on uh, when I sat down and, and figured out all the different projects that this administration has gone out to go three pages of this tech text, but it was three pages nonetheless. So they, they were all excited to, to hear what's happening in the city of Port Clinton. And that concludes my comments this evening. Having no other business from the floor, Mrs. DeFreitas, I will take a motion to adjourn. I move this August body adjourn. Got a second? Second, Mr. President. Thank you. We stand adjourned. Have a good evening.